That's right. Hola! I am here to provide you yet another math video. I know. So we say math. Math, math, math. Yeah, love it. Hey, let's get started here. We're doing a Eureka Math lesson today. Our objective, clear as it is, we're going to compare the size of the product to the size of the factors, which sounds very similar to a, a lesson we did with GoMath. Although, personally, just between you and me, shh, don't tell anybody. I kind of like Eureka. Eureka, I don't know, it's pretty awesome. Anyway, oh, well, that was on tape, Mr. Wara. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. Hey, let's get started. First problem we're just looking at is we're going to do some comparing with 12 inches. You know, if we had like a 12 inch, we could imagine. Let's just live in the world of imagination. Pretend that we had this black line that you can't see. It's hidden in the black. Where are you? Come on, black line. There you are. We'll make you another color here really quick. So let's just pretend this line here, right? This is yellow line. Uh, I need to get you to move. Move! Thank you. So just imagine it's like 12 inches. And what we're basically doing here, I'm going to put him down here, is we're taking a look at what happens when we take a fraction, 4 fourths, and we multiply it of 12. We look at what is 4 fourths of 12. And then we also look at it with 3 quarters of 12. And then we look at 5 quarters of 12. And so we want to kind of see what kind of pattern. Is there anything we can identify? So let's go ahead and start comparing this. When we look at the product, 4 fourths, well, that's like that 12-inch screen, that 12-inch, learning how to speak here, 12-inch string, okay? That it's like we're taking 4 fourths of that amount. So when you look at it, that's 3 quarters, so there's 4 fourths. So you can see that 4 fourths of 12 inches well, that's basically the entire 12 inches. If we multiplied it, um, basically 4 fourths, we'd end up with, yeah, we'd get 48 fourths. That's how many fourths we would have. Okay, based on our model here and our number line here, now we could say that 4 fourths then times 12 is going to equal 12. Okay, 4 fourths again is one whole times 12, and now here we have the identity property of multiplication giving us 12. Okay, so let's look let's, let's, what happens if we look at 3 fourths. Well, we look at 3 fourths of 12. Eh, something the string became, got a little bit shorter because we, we're only taking three parts of it now. One part, second part, three parts. So here's three quarters right here. So we're taking three quarters of that amount. You can see that we, we almost got to 12 inches, but, but not quite. We fell a little bit short. We wanted 3 fourths of it rather than 4 fourths. So the factor became smaller after we multiplied. And look, that's what happens. So when you multiply that, again, two different ways you could do that. You could multiply across and think of it as 3 times 12, which would give us 36 fourths, which we know would equal 9. Again, you could always cancel, right, dividing out... Not quite. Not quite. Okay? And then get it that way as well. Interesting. A little pattern. So now what starts to happen when we take a number that's greater than 1, because 5 fourths is greater than 1, what, what happens here? Well, look at that. 5 fourths means here's my 12-inch mark right here. 12 inches. I'm taking 4 fourths. But I'm going beyond that. Now, would it be logical then my, my answer is going to be greater than 12? Yeah, I think it would. I mean, basically, by changing the length of the string, you know, we're going to end up here because we want more of it. We want 5 fourths of that 12 inches, so we get to go beyond. And when we do the math problem to solve 5 fourths times 12, now you end up with 60 fourths. 12 times 5 is 60, and as you can see, we end up with a lot more. We end up with, wouldn't it be 3 more on top of what we had, the 12, the 15? So we end up with 15 inches, which goes beyond the 12. So here we could write 5 fourths then times 12. We're just going to say it's greater than 12, and this is what we were doing. We're comparing the size of the product to 
the size of the factors. Now, we've compared our factors to just to one factor, which was the 12 inches in each of these expressions. Okay? We definitely, we talked about, we explained the changes that we noticed by thinking about the other factor, ones that were basically four fours. And we call that number here the scaling factor. He's a scaling factor. I'm going to just write him down so you can see what it looks like written. The scaling factor is like that resizing factor that basically determines the size of the other factor that's being multiplied. See, we, we look at relationships with these expressions um, with three different examples. Now, when we multiply 12 inches by the scaling factor when it was equal to 1, we notice we just ended up with 1. The 12 did not change. When we look at an expression with the 3 quarters, that 3 quarters was the scaling factor here. The scaling factor, as you can see, was it, was it more or less than 1? Well, the scaling factor here, we know it's less than 1 because 4 fourths is 1, so 3 fourths is less than 1. What happened as a result to that length of the string when we use 3 fourths as that scaling factor? Well, it became shorter. It became less than 12. And when we used 5 fourths as the scaling factor, what happened? Just the opposite, right? It became more than 1. All right. Let's go on to the next page. Yes. Ooh, it's a hidden page. wonder why we're trying to hide. Good. Okay. And there's somebody hiding there in the dark. Who is that? Hey, it's Mary's lamb. What's Mary's lamb doing on my second page? <clears throat> yeah. Okay. Mary had a little lamb. I don't think so. Mary lost her little lamb. That would probably be a better little song here. Mary lost her little lamb. Yeah. <laughs> little lamb. She lost her little lamb. Okay. Let's go ahead and get this lamb out of here. Lamb, you need to go. Lamb, okay. Do you have a name there, Lamb? Thank you. Whew, that was a close call. Okay, so let's look at our, our problems that we have here. Again, I want to keep using this term. So here's our scaling factor. This is our scaling factor here and here. He's deciding how that one-third is going to get resized. Well, here we have four fourths. Well, this is very familiar. This is just like the last problem. What was the result in our previous problem when four fourths was used as a scaling, fa a scaling factor? If you recall, nothing changed, right? Four fourths times one third became four twelfths, which, when you divide the common factor out, you end up with one third. So four fourths didn't change that. So we, we, we determined that. So the size of one third uh, did not change when we multiplied it by a scaling factor that was equal to one. It didn't change. Now let's let's look at three quarters. Now, is the scaling factor more or less than one? Well, in this case, it's less than one. Three quarters is less than one. But what's going to happen if we multiply that fraction that's less than one with one-third. Well, let's take a look at what our product will be. Our product will be three-twelfths. Now, that is less than one-third, three-twelfths. As you see, it's going to equal, if we divide this at one-fourth, and one-fourth is less than one-third because we only really wanted part of that fraction. We didn't want four-fourths. We didn't want all of it. We only wanted three parts, three equal parts of four from that one-third. Now, let's look at the last one. Here our scaling factor is greater than 1. And the last time when that occurred, we ended up with a number that would, a product that would be greater than the, uh, both factors. And in this case, that's true. We end up with 5 twelfths, and 5 twelfths is almost 1 half, and it's larger same. See, 5 fourths times 1 third is 5 twelfths. So it became larger than 1 third. Almost became a half. So in this case, we could say, again, that 5 fourths 
times one-third is going to be greater than one-third because we multiplied it with a number greater than one. So this is the kind of patterns that we're, we're needing to look at. Alrighty, now let's look at some of these where we're going to actually we're going to actually start off with with one half and the expressions here have different scaling factors we have five-fifths we have three-fifths and we have nine-fifths now think about what would you know what would happen to the size of one half when it's multiplied by the scaling factor you know think you know think to ourselves like whether the product is going to be equal to one half more than one half or less than one half so that's what we're looking at. Well, first of all, when we take the one half times the five fifths, which is one half of five fifths, what what does that end up equaling? Yeah, it, it's just right equals equals one half. It comes right back to one half. So in this case, it didn't change. Well, when you think about five fifths, again, it's one. So you're taking one half of one which is simply just one half. So that didn't change at all. So in this case, the scaling factor was equal to one, so it didn't change the answer. Now let's look at one half times three fifths. Is it going to be less than one half? And why would this be less than one, one half, do you think? Okay, I think it's going to be less than one half. We're taking three fifths, well, we have one half, and three fifths, finding one half of three fifths, again, is less than three-fifths itself, so the number would be less. And we end up with three-tenths, and three-tenths is less than three-fifths following the same pattern. Now, what happens when we take one-half times nine-fifths? Well, yeah, if we take one-half times nine-fifths, you can see we end up with nine-tenths. We almost end up with a whole. Why is that the case? Well, think about it. Here, 9 fifths is more than 1. It's a fraction greater than 1. It's a whole number with even something more added to it. So logic says that you're going to get, that your product is going to be greater than the 1 half that you started with. Okay. So you, this is a pattern that we look at numbers, and this is a key thing. So what we're really focusing on is comparing the size of this product based on the size of the factors, and that's what we've been doing in this lesson thus far. Okay, let's do the very last problem. Okay, here it says, at the book fair, Anthony spends all of his money on new books. Oh, cool. Giselle spends two-thirds as much as Anthony. Okay, so Haley spends four-thirds as much as Anthony. Oh, my goodness. Who spent the most and the least? Wow, she just love these word problems. Well, let's go ahead. You know, immediately I think about modeling. Modeling. Um, where are you, shape? Thank you. Okay, I always think about, you know, modeling this. Because when we can model the problem, it will help. And I'm going to reread the problem as well, because that's going to make a big difference as well. And it looks like that. So let's reread the problem, make sure that we understand it. It says, at the book fair, Anthony spends all of his money on new books. So kind of right from the get-go, we can almost say that this here, and let's just use, for simplicity, we'll use A for Anthony, okay? So here's our A for Anthony, and let's just say this is all the money that Anthony's going to spend. So here's all the money that Anthony's going to spend, and basically, this is going to be the whole thing. Why do we say it's the whole thing? Because the problem is he spends all of his money. So basically, that's the total again, for Anthony and how much money he spends. Now, we're going to compare that. Now, it does say, what else do we have? It says, Giselle spends two-thirds as much as Anthony. And, and remember, we were looking at all that comparing the size, so we know that our number is going to be less. We could take this and make another one. So I'm going to kind of show two-thirds. So if I broke Anthony's money up into thirds, that would be one-third, so two-thirds. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to take Giselle's then, and I'm just going to kind of move it down like so, because she's really only spending two-thirds. And you can see that that tape diagram models 
uh, the amount of money she spent. And I'll just split this so you can see that that's a third and then two thirds. Now, finally, we have Haley, where it says Haley spends four thirds as much as Anthony. Okay, four thirds as much as Anthony. Well, we have, we need to maybe do one more tape diagram. So it appears to me that she spent as much as he did plus another third. Well, how can we show that? Well, let's show it this way. See, what I can do is just kind of match it up with one of the thirds, any one of those thirds, because three thirds plus one more third. So let's do that. I'll make this one fit kind of like right on top. See, now I can just kind of add that on there. Now that shows Haley's, because she spent four thirds as much as Anthony. And as you can see, here's a third, there's another third, and now she has four thirds. And this, we can make green too, make it all batch together. So now we've really taken this to a whole new level. We made our tape diagram for Anthony. Okay, We were able to draw upon what Anthony spent, which was all his money, that Giselle spent two-thirds of that same amount. So we were able to split hers into third. We're just going over this, making sure. And then again, Haley, who spent four-thirds as much money as Anthony, we were able to, to uh, show how in Haley, we were actually able to show how much money she spent based on how much Anthony spent. Now, what's nice about this problem is it, it, it did dissolve itself, didn't it? Because it said, who spent the most? Well, now we know that Haley spent the most, okay? And where it says, who spent the least? We can see Giselle spent the least. There we go. And now we've answered the question. We've shown it with our model. And it has also helped us using this word problem because we've been able to look at what we, when we were comparing the size of the product. So a few things is quick review. We learned what a scaling factor, I mean a scaling factor, what a scaling factor does. Now we know that when it comes to a number greater than one, that it's going to be greater than the other factor that you're multiplying, that the product is going to be greater than that other factor. And here, if the scaling factor is less, okay, then uh, then the, the whole number, then you're, goes, you're going to end up with a number that's, that's less than, because you're actually only finding two-thirds, like in this case it was just two-thirds. Okay, my friends, that concludes this lesson. Woohoo! Yes, another video complete. Please make sure that you enter the code word, even though it came at, came at you in a different way.